Starfly had been terrified plenty of times since leaving the caves where he grew up. He had thought nothing could ever be worse than the moment Queen Scarlet walked in with her guards, killed Dune, and took all the Dragonets prisoner. But then, there was the moment he stood in her arena, knowing that she intended for him to be violently dead by the end of the day. That was followed by the moment Queen Coral had thrown them in her prison, Tsunami's plunge through the electric eels, the Skywing attack on the Summer Palace, their frantic escape right through the middle of a battle, and perhaps the actual worst, when Sunny had disappeared right in front of him in the rainforest. Not to mention all the scary things he had faced since being abducted by the Nightwings. In fact, he had spent most of his last few weeks in a state of near-constant terror. This was a whole other level. A level of, that's not scientifically possible, and, has it been under the lava this whole time, and, that's not possible, and, now this is really it and there's no one to protect me and I'm definitely absolutely 100% going to die because that is a dragon who lives in lava. Its head and wings came first in a fountain of golden molten lava, and then a set of claws shot out and clutched the sides of the cauldron. The dragon shook itself, sending splatters of lava flying. Slowly, the lava poured off her head, revealing a thick-set neck, a battle-scarred snout, and black scales that gleamed like polished ebony against the orange-yellow pool around her. Starflight! 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 Fate Speaker whispered in a panicked rush, shaking his arm violently. Do something! Like what? He whispered back. The tunnel was on the far side of the cauldron. They'd have to get past the dragon and the lava she was dripping everywhere if they wanted to run away, which was what he really, really wanted to do. The dragon in the lava leaned forward and glared at them. Buzzing white steam seemed to be rising from her scales. Her tongue flicked in and out as she studied the two dragonettes, and Starflight realized there was a glint of icy blue in the depth of her black eyes. When she opened her mouth, he spotted two teeth that were the same shade of blue, looking more like icicles than regular teeth. Ew, she rasped suddenly. Her voice was hard to hear, creaky and quiet and rough and eerie, like claws scraping on ice several caves away. No one, Starflight stammered. Please don't kill us, Fate Speaker squeaked. Don't make me, said the lava dragon. She hissed again, her claws flexing around the edge of the cauldron. How? How did we find you? Starflight filled in. We were looking for the queen, Queen Battle Winner. I, said the dragon. Her eyes narrowed. You. We're. We're the Dragonettes of the Prophecy, Fate Speaker said. I'm Fate Speaker and this is Starflight. <sighs> the Queen sank lower in the lava. Unimpressive. How is this happening? Starflight burst out. Why aren't you dead? The temperature you're immersed in, the boiling point, the physical reaction of lava and scales. I saw what happened to Vengeance. You can't be swimming in lava. It just isn't possible. Even dragons born from blood-red eggs like clay could probably only withstand that kind of heat for a minute or two. And as far as I know, Nightwings don't have eggs like that anyway, so this can't be happening, scientifically speaking. The Queen let out a small, possibly amused snort, blowing bubbles across the surface of the lava. Mastermind son, she rasped. She studied him for a moment, then leaned forward, opening her jaws as wide as they would go. For a moment, Starflight thought she was about to lunge out of the cauldron and bite their heads off. But then he realized from her odd position that she was actually holding herself so he could look inside her mouth. His fear slowly started to fade as curiosity took over, and he stepped closer. Starflight? Fate Speaker whispered anxiously. This wasn't in any of my visions. I'm really not sure about this. Three moons, he said, his eyes widening. Fate Speaker, look. You can see right down her throat. And it's blue. 
The walls of Battle Winner's throat were lined with what looked like pale blue frost, small swirling patterns that were feathery or sharp and all glinted oddly. What is it? Starflight met Battle Winner's eyes again. She snapped her mouth shut. Ice! The creak of her voice seemed to rattle her to her wingtips. She took a deep breath, dipped her whole head in the lava, and emerged again. Ice? Starflight echoed. His mind whirled into gear, trying to solve this mystery. Was this connected to the Nightwing bacteria that killed their prey? Or had she just swallowed a lot of ice to combat the lava? That made no sense. Where would the dragons even get ice out here on the island where it's too perpetually warm? Queen Battlewinra was watching him, as if this was a test, and she had decided to save her breath and see if he could figure it out. Her breath? Ice wings! Starflight burst out. Their weapon, the Frost Breath! Battlewinner nodded, her heavy shoulders sliding up out of the lava and back down again. Her black tongue flicked in and out again, and this time he saw that it only has a layer of thin, shimmering frost on it. You got blasted by an ice wing, he said slowly. You must have been on the continent when you ran into one, is that it? And you fought, and it hit you, but not on the outside. Maybe your mouth was open and it went right in and down your throat to freeze your insides. Which means you should have been dead within a day. The queen flicked her wings back, scattering sizzling orange droplets around. Not so easy, she growled. To kill you, Starflight finished. You made it back here, and the lava... The lava stops the effect of the freezing, is that it? Indeed, the queen hissed again. A balance. But how, Fate Speaker said. I mean, how did you know the lava wouldn't just kill you right away? Starfly could imagine it clearly. Battle winner on the continent, perhaps looking for a new home for the Nightwings, running into an ice wing and nearly dying in battle. But she staggered back through that long, awful flight to the island, feeling colder and colder and closer to death by the minute. The fire that burned inside fire-breathing dragons like Nightwings and Skywings would have been working against the ice to keep her alive for a while, but it wouldn't be enough to save her. By the time she had made it to the island, she would have been shivering violently and feeling terribly sick as her stomach and intestines began to freeze and fuse together, spreading the icy plague out from her organs toward her scales. At that point, he could imagine she felt so cold that diving into lava sounded better than anything. Even if it killed her, and maybe she expected it to, it couldn't be worse than what she was already feeling. And instead, it saved her life. Queen Battlewinner was alive now, but the frost breath was still inside her. She could never leave the lava or else it would finish its work. The rest was details, although he was still curious about all of it. Like, who knew her secret besides greatness? How this room had been built and the screens put in? How the cauldron had been filled with lava and prepared for her? He wondered if she could still eat, or if she existed in kind of a suspended state, right on the edge of death. The queen was watching him closely, perhaps reading his mind as he put all the pieces together. He guessed that speaking was painful, scraping and cracking the ice in her throat and mouth, and that was why she did as little of it as she possibly could. I'm sorry, he said to her finally. It seems like an awful thing what happened to you. Battlewinner's head spikes flattened and her snout lifted. No pity, she snarled. Revenge soon. That sounded ominous, but worrying about ice wings would have to wait. Starflight reached out and took one of Fate Speaker's talons in his. We wanted to talk to you about the prophecy, he said hesitantly. We're afraid Moroseer is being too cruel and interfering too much. The queen cut him off with a barking laugh and then doubled over in pain, clutching her neck. After a moment, she recovered enough to glare at him. Do as he says, she hissed. The prophecy's everything. But he swam squid away to die today, Fate Speaker pleaded. 
and he says he's going to kill me or Starflight. And the Ringwing prisoners are being treated so terribly. Please, it doesn't have to be like this, does it? Anything to <laughs> save the tribe, said the queen. She began to sink down into the lava. Leave now. Wait, please, cried Fate Speaker. But lava was already closing over the dark dragon's head. She was gone. They had failed.